Hi, we will continue our lesson for chapter 2. We will discuss about linear motion. In this video, we will sketch displacement time, velocity time and acceleration times graph. Interpret displacement time, velocity time and acceleration times graph and lastly determine the distance travel displacement, velocity and acceleration from appropriate graph. First, let's take a look at the displacement time graph. For the displacement time graph, we can get the value of velocity from the gradient of the graph. Instantaneous velocity v equal to ds over dt equal to gradient of st graph. Let's take a look at the figure A. From figure A, what can we see? We can see that the gradient is the same. Therefore, we can say that the velocity of this object is uniform with time. For figure B, at point A, we can find the gradient. So the gradient at point A is also equal to the velocity. For this graph, we can see that the gradient for each time is different. Therefore, we can say that the velocity for this graph is different. For figure C, we can see that at point B, the gradient is equal to zero. Therefore, the velocity at point B is equal to zero. Next, let's take a look at the velocity versus time graph. For this graph, we can get two information. The first one is area under VT graph is equal to displacement and the gradient of VT graph is equal to acceleration. Let's take a look at figure A. Okay. From figure A, the red one here represent the area under VT graph from T1 to T2. Therefore, the area here is equal to the displacement of the object from T1 to T2. What about the acceleration? The acceleration for VT graph can be found using the gradient. As we can see here, the gradient is equal to zero, means that the acceleration is equal to zero. Therefore, the object moves with a uniform velocity since the acceleration is equal to zero. What about figure B? For figure B, the red one here shows the displacement. And for the acceleration, we can find it using the gradient. And as we can see, the gradient is the same. Okay, therefore, the acceleration is uniform. What about figure C? For figure C, there are three different points. We have points A, points B, and point C. What happened at point A? At point A, the gradient is positive. Therefore, the value of A is positive. What means by A positive or A greater than zero? Means that the object is speeding up. At point B, the gradient is zero. Therefore, here the object moves with uniform velocity. At point C, the gradient is negative. A is less than zero, means that the object is slowing down. Next, let's take a look at graph 
acceleration versus time. Let's see the first graph. For this graph, we can see that the acceleration is equal to zero, means that the object is moving with a uniform velocity. The area under the graph for a t graph represents the velocity. For the second graph, we can see that the value of acceleration is constant. And the value of A is positive. Therefore, the object is under acceleration. For figure 3, we can see that the value of A is constant. But it is negative value. Means that the object is under deceleration. For the Velocity, we can find it using the area under the graph. So from that three types of graph, we can conclude that if our graph is ST graph, we can find the velocity using the gradient of the graph. If our graph, if VT graph, the gradient of VT graph will equal to acceleration and area under the graph will equal to the displacement. And for acceleration versus time graph, the area under the graph represent the velocity. Let's see the some example. A toy train moves slowly along a straight track according to the displacement S against time T in figure 2.1. Explain qualitatively the motion of the toy train. Sketch a velocity against time graph. Determine the average velocity for the whole journey. Calculate the instantaneous velocity at 11 seconds. And lastly, determine the distance traveled by the toy train. As we can see from this figure, you are given a graph of S versus T graph. For S versus T graph, the area, the gradient will equal to the velocity. Okay, so let's take a look from 0 to 10 seconds. So from 0 to 10 seconds, we can see that the toy train does not move. Why? Because the displacement is constant. Starting from 10 to 14, the toy train starts to move. Therefore, we can find the velocity here using the gradient. So, for question A, 0 to 10 seconds, the train is at rest or stationary or not moving. And from 10 to 14 seconds, the train moves in positive direction at a constant velocity of 1.5 cm per second. Why is it in positive direction? Because the value of S displacement is positive. For question B, you are asked to plot a graph of V versus T. So, from 0 to 10 seconds, the velocity is 0 because the strain is at rest. And from 10 to 14, it moves with constant velocity of 1.5 cm per second. For the next question, find the average velocity for the whole journey. So to find the average velocity, we need to find the final displacement minus initial displacement divided by the time taken for the whole journey. So our final displacement is 10 and initial displacement is 4. So we will get the average velocity for the whole journey is 0 0.429 cm per second. What about question D? Question D is to find 
the instantaneous velocity at 11 seconds. From the graph, we know that from 10 to 14 seconds, the velocity is constant. Do you still remember the condition for uniform velocity or constant velocity? A constant velocity. Yes. If the if the velocity is constant, means that the average velocity is equal to the instantaneous velocity. So for the velocity at 11 seconds, we can find it using average velocity from 10 to 14 seconds. So 10 minus 4 divided by 4, so you will get V average equal to 1.5 cm per second. And since the velocity is uniform, V average is equal to V instantaneous. Lastly, the distance traveled by the train. Since we have the graph of V against T, the distance can be found using area under the graph. Therefore, using area under the graph, the distance of the toy train is 6 cm. We will continue our lesson in the next video. Thank you.